On September 21st, 2020, Buddhists across the world will celebrate the 70th birthday of the Venerable Eighth Arjuna Koshi, wishing him a happy and long life, and that he may remain in the world for many years to come to turn the Dharma wheel for all sentient beings. Arjuna Rinpoche is the throne holder and abbot of Kumbu Monastery and the reincarnation of the father of Jaisong Kappa, the founder of the Kulu lineage of Tibetan Buddhism. For generations and across time, Arjuna Rinpoche has made great contributions to Kumbu Monastery and has been respected and very loved. The third Arjuna Rinpoche was invited by Emperor King Long to live in Beijing for many years, and the fifth to seventh Arjuna Rinpoche were also invited to Beijing by the King Emperors many times and rewarded with land and mansions. The sixth Arjuna Rinpoche was invited to Japan to meet the Emperor of Japan. In this life, the eighth Arjuna Rinpoche has survived the hardships of political turbulences in China, including the Great Leap Forward and the religious reform from 1958 to 1962 and the Cultural Revolution from 1966 to 1976. In the 1980s, after the Cultural Revolution, Arjuna Rinpoche was reinstated by the government and later raised to high-level positions as a member of the Standing Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and the Vice President of the Buddhist Association of China. After witnessing cheating by the CCP at the Golden Urn Ceremony and the selection of the 11th Panchen Lama, Arjuna Rinpoche rejected the CCP's arrangement to be the tutor of the disputed new Panchen Lama and instead escaped China in 1988 to the United States. At the request of His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, Arjuna Rinpoche has served as the abbot of the Tibetan Mongolian Buddhist Cultural Center in Indiana, which is dedicated to spreading compassion and wisdom, the two main themes of Buddhism, to the West, and promoting peace and dialogue among different religions. The eighth Arjuna Rinpoche, Lobsang Thupten Yidman Gyatso, was born in a Mongolian yurt in the Dolinar Steppe in Amdo, northeastern Tibet in 1950 the year of the Iron Tiger, and at the hour of the tiger, on the day of the tiger, according to the Tibetan calendar. Rinpoche's mother was a Mongolian, and his father was half Mongolian, half Tibetan. Before his birth, his mother had a prophetic dream that a dragon was swinging and twining above the opening on top of their yurt, and people came to visit from different places carrying katas and other auspicious gifts. At the age of two, Rinpoche was recognized by the 10th Panchen Lama, as the reincarnation of the eighth Arja Rinpoche, the future abbot and holder of the Dharma throne of Kumbu Monastery. Later, Arja Rinpoche received Dharma teachings from many great lamas, especially his uncle Gayak Rinpoche, who arranged a course schedule with a focus on developing compassion and wisdom, even during hard times. Among these courses, Rinpoche especially liked rhetoric, architectural design and drawing, and excelled in making butter sculptures and mandalas. His scripture, tutors once praised him for his excellent artwork, all saying the aspiration in your previous life must have now come true. In the 1950s, the Chinese People's Liberation Army invaded Tibet. In 1958, when Rinpoche was eight years old, over a hundred communist cadres and PLA soldiers broke into Kumbu Monastery to enforce religious reforms. The monks were forced to give up their monkhood, and all religious activities had to cease. Monks were persecuted at public rallies one after another and eventually sent to prisons in groups after being beaten with lashes, scalded with hot charcoal, and strangled with hemp ropes around their necks. The young Rinpoche was also forced to receive re-education by the CCP. The number of monks in Kumbu Monastery fell from more than 3,000 to 60. Rinpoche's father also died unjustly in prison. Then during the Greek leap forward from 1958 to 1962, Mao Zedong advocated the Three Red Banners policy to quickly build a socialist state. In a frenzy to improve grain production, people were ordered to cut trees and grow wheat day and night, turning the green, treed rolling hills around Kumbu Monastery into farmlands. In addition, motivated by Mao's slogan to catch up with and surpass the United Kingdom in industrial output in 15 years, the CCP mobilized a mass movement to build small backyard furnaces in an attempt to produce steel out of scrap metal. The iron parts on Buddha shrines and locks and keys of Buddha halls in Kumbu Monastery 
were dissembled and thrown into the furnaces, melted down, and monks were forced to work on iron-worn mines continuously day and night. From these treasures, useless lumps of iron were produced. The radical changes in farming organization and policies during the Great Leap Forward led to year-over-year -year production drops and massive waste of stored food. Yet the CCP reported exaggerated crop yields to meet the zeal of Mao, which caused the false fiction of a superabundance of grain. As a result, excessive state grain purchase from peasants was still forcibly implemented, and the combination of these two policies eventually caused the great year of Great Famine between the years 1959 and 1961. Arjur and Pushi, who was then a child, suffered hunger for several years and witnessed people starving to death around him on his way to and from school. The so-called Great Leap Forward carried out by the CCP took the lives of an estimated 45 million people. In 1961, the policies were loosened for a short period. The 10th Panchen Lama, as the leader of Tibetan Buddhism, was reinstated to the position as the acting director of the Preparatory Committee for the Autonomous Region of Tibet. He then vigorously resumed religious exhibits. Arjur Rinpoche and Sedak Rinpoche were finally able to go to Tashi Lupu Monastery to learn Dharma under the guidance of the 10th Panchen Lama. In 1964, two years before the start of the Cultural Revolution, more than 100 CCP cadres and armed soldiers occupied Tashi Lupu Monastery and the nightmare reoccurred. During the socialist education movement, Arjur and Pushi then, at the age of 14, was forced to study government regulations instead of Buddhism together with other monks. They were sent away to work in a remote area to dig canals all day and all night. The CCP had been systematically stigmatizing the image of old Tibet before the Chinese invasion as a hell on earth, with cruel exploitation and punishment of slaves by the feudal serfdom. The, their purpose was to justify their carrying out of political movements and bloody suppression on Tibetans. To expose the truth, the 24-year-old 10th Panchen Lama visited different regions of Tibet and wrote a brilliant report, later known as the 70,000 Character Petition. It describes in detail the abuse of policies and brutal actions of the CCP in Tibet. As soon as the report was delivered to Mao through Premier Zhao and Lai, the Panchen Lama was regarded as an anti-communism separatist, persecuted in public rallies, and then kept in prison for 10 years during the Cultural Revolution. During the Cultural Revolution, the cultural legacies preserved in the Grand Gold Tile Hall of Kumbu Monastery were all severely damaged by the Red Guards in the name of destroying the Four Olds, including the body of Lama Tsongkhapa, 108 volumes of Tripitaka handwritten with ink mixed with jewel powder pigments, Buddha statues in different styles, exquisite tankas, ritual instruments, painted beams and carved pillars, ancient murals, as well as the plaques inscribed with calligraphy by sages across history. At the age of 16, Arjur and Poshi was sent back to Kumbu Monastery, but was forced to labor in the fields to plow the land, build bridges, repair roads, and dig reservoirs. In the butler's room of his former residence, a huge portrait of Mao was hung, and every morning and evening, everyone was required to line up in front of it and bow together to Mao's picture. Even during the Cultural Revolution, when a monk passed away, Rinpoche and other monks would secretly host pujas and recite sutras for them. The rituals were hosted at midnight until the ceremony was finished in the form of the sky burial or cremation. The great Lama Geshe Gassang left many beautiful relics after cremation. Until death, Lama Gesang had never forgotten the pure precepts as a monk. He told his last will to Arjun Rinpoche that in the future when pujas are hosted, please encourage the donor to offer vegetarian food to the monks of Kumbu so they will gradually get used to it. Your own example of promoting vegetarian food will benefit a lot of sentient beings. From then on, Arjun Rinpoche decided to become a vegetarian in the hope that no life would be killed because of them. He also hopes that all believers of Tibetan Buddhism can become vegetarians. One day, the news of Mao Zedong's death came out of the loudspeakers. In great shock themselves, the armed soldiers supervised a memorial service attended by more than 10,000 people including a few monks who were forced to join. Even though the CCP regime had cruelly suppressed Tibetan Buddhism and Tibetans were persecuted by Mao Zedong, including the monks themselves, many monks would still chant the sutras and pray for Mao with compassion, especially when they thought of the heavy negative karmas he might face in his next lives. It's an example of what the Buddha taught that all people, rich or poor, 
good or bad, should be equally treated with compassion and forgiveness. In 1977, many of these so-called rebels were released from prison and religious activities became partially allowed. The Gang of Four stepped down from power and Deng Xiaoping's time came. Kumbu Monastery was listed as a major historical and cultural site protected at the national level. As the abbot of Kumbu, Rinpoche had to visit different ministries of the bureaucracy to apply funding and subsidies. Finally, enough money was raised for sorting and registering Tibetan books and cultural relics and for repairing the badly damaged temple. During that time, Arjun Rinpoche also built a three-dimensional Kala Chakra mandala together with Gayak Rinpoche and repaired the stupa of Lama Tsongkhapa. After Rinpoche was then appointed by the governor as a member of the All-China Youth Federation, vice president of the Buddhist Association of China, and a member of the standing committee of the Chinese Political Consultative Conference, and often went to Beijing to attend meetings and give speeches. However, the scripts of these speeches had all been written by the CCP officials, and no one could truly express their own opinions. During this period, these higher authorities tried hard to persuade Rinpoche to join the Communist Party with inducements such as promotion, raises in salary and privileges. Yet Rinpoche had been firmly determined to turn it down. After the Cultural Revolution, the 10th Panchen Lama was released from prison. As a placative gesture, the government then appointed him as Vice Chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress and Honorary President of the Buddhist Association of China. During that time, Arjun Rinpoche accompanied the Panchen Lama in their visits to Nepal, South America, and other places. In 1987, the Panchen Lama established the high-level Tibetan Buddhism College in Beijing. And Arjun Rinpoche and other lamas of the major lineages of Tibetan Buddhism were enrolled into the college to study the five classes of knowledge and commentaries on Lam Rin. And the next year, Arjun Rinpoche completed his studies, and at the graduation ceremony, the Panchen Lama himself conferred diplomas and katas upon the graduates. As an honor student, Arjun Rinpoche was hired as a research fellow at Tibetan Studies Division of the college. In January 1989, in the consecration ceremony of the Tasha Namyal Shrine, the Panchen Lama openly pointed out the destruction of Tibetan culture and Tibetan Buddhism by the CCP and the new policies that should be in place in the future. The next day, the Panchen Lama passed away suddenly in his bedroom, raising strong suspicions. Seeing the Panchen Lama's body, Arjun Rinpoche shed sad tears, and Gayak Rinpoche got very sick out of shock and sorrow. In the spring of the same year, Gayak Rinpoche was transferred to Peking University Medical College Hospital in Beijing. Arjun Rinpoche stayed in the guest house in Yangshi Monastery, since it was near the hospital and convenient for him to take care of his teacher. Soon, student-led protests were held in Tenement Square. Wearing a piece of white cloth around their heads, these students held banners and shouted their slogans, End Corruption! Demand Democracy! Arjun Rinpoche was inspired by these students, so he often went to the square to sit together with them to express his support for democracy and freedom. Rinpoche's from the Buddhism College in Beijing were also planning to join the demonstration, but they were soon closely monitored and the classes were stopped at the college. On June 4th, gunshots were fired at Tenement Square. By the order of the CCP government, PLA troops and tanks cruelly suppressed the just demand of barehanded suits, shocking the world. Soon after, Arjun Rinpoche's great teacher, Gyak Rinpoche, passed away. Shortly, at, shortly, Rinpoche's mother also passed away. Though he had been through so many hardships and grievances in this life, at such great losses, Rinpoche couldn't restrain from crying with sorrow. When Arjun Rinpoche returned to Queen Hay, he devoted himself to repairing the earthquake damages to Kubu Monastery. By 1993, when Chairman Jiang Zemin, then the top leader of the CCP, visited Kumbu, the monastery had been restored to its original monastery and grandeur. Jiang highly praised the exquisite artwork of butter sculptures and wrote a calligraphy as Butter Sculpture Museum, which was later inscribed on the plaque above the museum. Since about the 15th century, it had become a tradition that the Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama recognize each other's reincarnations. In May 1995, the 14th Dalai Lama announced that Gerun Chokki Nima was officially recognized as the 11th Panchen Lama. The Chinese government was outraged. By Jiang Zemin's order, the government announced that the 14th Dalai Lama's recognition of the reincarnation was invalid 
and it secretly kidnapped the six-year-old new pension llama and hid him from the outside world. Until today, the whereabouts of the youngest political prisoner remain unknown. Soon after, a great number of TCP officials and armed forces went to Lhasa, and a golden urn lottery ceremony was held. At gunpoint of the PLA, stationed by two sides of the road, Rinpoches and High Lamas were forced to attend the event. The whole procedure was recorded during the middle of the night, but later broadcasted on television news as if it had happened in the daytime to create the false image that monks and Rinpoches willingly endorsed the ceremony. But at the event, everything had been prearranged to make sure which boy would be chosen. On the return flight after the ceremony, Yi Zewin, director of the State Council's Bureau of Religious Affairs, in fact, blatantly told details of how they had cheated in the selection of the ceremony. The CCP's recognition of the new Panchen Lama has never been accepted by the Dalai Lama, the Tibetan government in exile, and Tibetan Buddhists all over the world. To help the fake Panchen Lama gain trust and popularity, however, the CCP proposed that Arja Rinpoche, who was highly respected by Buddhists and non-Buddhists, serve as his tutor. By this time, Arja Rinpoche could no longer endure the CCP's forceful suppression of religious freedom and the brutal trampling of human rights in Tibet. No matter how hard the CCP tried to persuade him with promises of financial benefits, promotion and privileges, he could not betray his own faith to accept the position as the tutor of the fake pension lama. He was firmly determined to flee in secret and bid farewell to the sinister political arena. Rinpoche secretly left China in a group of five including his attendant, Jigmi Chokyo, who was an excellent monk with a caring and attentive heart, his bodyguard and driver, Lopsung Jongdi, Lopsung's new bride, Miru, and Rinpoche's nephew, Cheng Li, who had been adopted by Rinpoche and grew up by his side. Disguised as a small tourist group, they took a direct flight from Beijing to Guatemala. The escape from China was smooth, yet a thrilling experience. Later, Arjun Rinpoche wrote a letter to His Holiness Dalai Lama and asked Rinpoche's friend Christine to take it to Dharam Chala. When His Holiness read the letter, he shared the following words in the letter with people around him. If we use the cultural revolution and the religious reform as excuses for not practicing Buddhism, we will only harm ourselves in future lives. With the blessings and help from His Holiness, Arjun Rinpoche and his group gained U.S. visas to attend His Holiness's Dharma teaches in New York. His Holiness carefully asked Rinpoche about a lot of things, gave him a short oral transmission of Dharma, and then asked if he could write a letter to Jing Zemin and express His Holiness's willingness to solve the Tibetan issue sooner. However, in Jing's response letter, nothing was mentioned about the dialogue between China and Tibet, and there was only a poem addressed to Arjun Rinpoche pressing him to come back to China. It read, Dear Arjun Rinpoche, the three arts of Chair Kumbu Monastery shine like the full moon. 100,000 Buddhas gather in the mandala of Kumbu. The most beautiful lotus flowers still await by the river Songshu, with the same fragrance to welcome you back to the sweet home. Jiang Zemin. When Rinpoche moved to Mill Valley, California, he established the Tibetan Center for Compassion and Wisdom and started teaching Buddhism there. During their stay in California, Rinpoche and Chopil made a 3D Kalachakra mandala. In 1999, at the Kalachakra Empowerment by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama in the Tibetan Mongolian Buddhist Cultural Center in Bloomington, Indiana, the 3D mandala was offered to His Holiness for his blessing. In the year 2000, His Holiness then in turn gave this gift to the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. at the Kalachakra Empowerment of the Year. The Tibetan Mongolian Buddhist Cultural Center, the TMBCC in Bloomington, Indiana, was built in 1979 by Thupten Jemda Norbu, who was an elder brother of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and a professor of Indiana University. It was decided and it was dedicated to bringing Dharma teachings of Tibetan Buddhism to the West. In 2005, due to Professor Norbu's failing health, the Dalai Lama assigned Arjun Rinpoche to be the abbot of TMBZC. Since both Norbu Rinpoche and Arjun Rinpoche came from Kumbu Monastery in Tibet, the center was also named the Western Kumbu. In the following years, Rinpoche began to repair and expand the center and optimize its management and programs. In 2007 and 2010, His Holiness the Dalai Lama visited the center twice, 
giving lectures on compassion and hosting interfaith peace prayers to promote dialogue and harmony among different religions. The TMBCC also hosts summer camps for children of Tibetan and Mongolian families in the U.S. to introduce Tibetan and Mongolian culture to them. In these summer camps, children set up and sleep in Mongolian yurts and learn Tibetan and Mongolian languages, dances, and traditional ethics and morality. Arjun Rinpoche also visited Mongolia many times. During his visits, Rinpoche was especially concerned with sick children and poor families in orphanages. Beginning in 2009, Arjun Rinpoche built a six-floor cancer care treatment center affiliated with the maternity hospital in the capital city of Ulaanbaatar to provide children suffering from cancer with good medical treatments and care. Rinpoche also established the multi-education center in India for Tibetan refugees, sent books to children in Dharamchala, and supported tour groups of Tibetan monks from India traveling to the U.S. to raise funds for their monasteries by giving lectures, teaching meditation, yoga, and making sand mandalas. He also raised funds to donate to the mayor of Sendai, Japan, through the Japan Earthquake Relief Fund in the aftermath of the tsunami in 2011. Since last year, Arjun Rinpoche has been funding children from poor families in remote regions of Mongolia with full scholarships. Now, Arjun Rinpoche is also seeking help for building a senior activity center in Ulaanbaatar. Guided by Arjun Rinpoche's great vision and continuous efforts as a director, the TMBCC will continue to provide international aid and charity from their Bloomington based center. The unique life experience of Arjun Rinpoche over the past 70 years has reflected the traditional cultures and customs of Tibetan and Mongolian people. It is also a life experience of struggles and arduous efforts to protect and preserve these pre precious religious and cultural heritages. Rinpoche often reminded himself of the words of his teacher, Gyak Rinpoche, even if you're ill-treated, don't treat others with hatred. Even if you're faced with a stressful situation, don't lose your cool and practice patience and compassion. Even if you're taken advantage of, don't care too much about your ego. Arjun Rinpoche strongly believes that compassion and wisdom are what make Tibetans and Mongolians especially strong and resilient. In this turbulent world, the equality of all beings and against harming all beings is valued by Buddhism and this would contribute to promoting world peace. It's worth our efforts to uphold and promote these great values. May Arjun Rinpoche be blessed it's with extreme gratitude that so many in the Sangha around the world celebrate his birthday and may he live for many years longer to turn the Dharma wheel for the benefit of all beings. <laughs>